Haskell researcher announced discovery of industry programmer who gives a shit. I mean, I know this this article is is uh, is is almost 15 years old at this point, but this is incredible. I truly, truly only thought that Haskell was a white paper language. Like, fact that somebody's doing something with it. I mean, Pitt keeps telling me that he's gainfully employed programming Haskell, but honestly, I don't believe it. Like, I I haven't believed it yet. I just don't think it's real. But I mean, now we got papers. Co- I mean, this classic Haskell writing papers that there are people who actually care using Haskell in production. I mean, classic, classic Haskell error here. Uh, the worldwide Haskell community met up over beers today to celebrate. <laughs> oh, no. There's dozens of us. Uh, their unprecedented discovery of an industry programmer who gives a shit about Haskell. On when <laughs> is this about, wait, is this article about you, Pick? Are, are you this person, Pick? Tell us the truth. On Wednesday, researchers uh, issued a press release revealing that a 27-year-old Seth Breyers of North Carolina, dude, sorry for doxing you, pick, uh, a Java programmer at Blackwater accounting firm Ross and Fordham, actually gives a shit about Haskell. Mr. Byers has followed every single one of our press releases for years, and uh, the press release stated, probably even this one. <laughs> I love onion-like articles, specifically with something like Haskell. This is so good. Uh, Haskell researcher Dutch Van Der Linde, classic, uh, explained how they had stumbled on their on the theoretical possibility of Breyers and his persistent interest in Haskell. We knew that there are precisely 38 people who give a shit about Haskell, said Van Der Linde, because every Haskell-related Reddit post gets exactly 38 upvotes. It's a pure deterministic function of no arguments. <laughs> oh, oh, it hurts. Oh, my goodness. The function, the function returns. <laughs> Ain't no way that function returning 38 every time. Oh, my goodness. That is the result is independent of what is actually announced. Uh, but there are only 37 of us on the mailing list. So we figured out there was a lurker somewhere. Facts. Facts don't care about your feelings, Haskell. Uh, that is, or that, or it was an off by one error not detectable by our type system. <laughs> Vander Lindy added, but we don't uh, like to dwell on, I mean, with good unit testing practices, we can, uh, uh, s- sorry, I need to get some water. Also, Vander Lindy stumbled off in a coughing fit. His fellow researcher, uh, Bonnie McFarlane, uh, outlined their basic dilemma. Finding a person who gives a shit about Haskell is an inherently NP-complete computer science problem. It's similar in scope and complexity to the problem of trying to find a tenured academic who didn't have the bulk of his or her work done by uncredited graduate students. <laughs> yes! Yes! Let it be said! Oh my goodness, I still remember the first time I ever did a, my official first academic paper. And when I did it, all the work and everything finally came down to it. Did all the all the work, did all the research, did all the graphing, did all the writing, did everything. Got it into a conference, did all the applying, did all the driving, did all the speaking, did every last little bit of it. And when we got done with it, the name that is first on the paper, of course, the faculty member with whom was our guide. Of course, of course, this is just it. I wasn't even a graduate student. I was a, I was a, I was a baccalaureate in more than one way, by the way. Oh, I was bachelored pretty hard in multiple different ways. So even though we suspected buyers existed, we needed a strategy to smoke them out. She explained the trap they set for buyers. We crafted a fake satirical post lampooning Haskell as unusable, overly complex turd, a writing task that was emotionally difficult but conceptually trivial. <laughs> That, okay, this this is probably one of the greatest ways to describe Rust sometimes. Conceptually, trivial. Emotionally, difficult. <laughs> it, is, it is so good. The best way to describe Rust. Bam. And we tweet it. Then we laced the post with deeper social subtext to crying the endemic superficiality uh, and laziness of global industry programming culture to make ourselves feel better. <laughs> Finally, 
<laughs> Finally, each of us upvoted the post, which was unexpected, uh, unexpectedly contentious because nobody could agree on what Reddit voting arrows actually mean. <laughs> this is so good. And then we waited to see who, if anyone, would give a shit, she said. McFarlane concluded, our elegant approach didn't work, so we hired a Pearl hacker to go dig up some personal details of all 38 accounts that had ever upvoted a Haskell post, and the only one we didn't know was Seth Byers. Uh, so we reached out to him, and thankfully, so far, he hasn't threatened to sue us. <laughs> Byers says he is pleased to have been recognized for his apparently unique shit-giving about Haskell. I've been giving a shit about Haskell for a long time, as I can... Uh, oh my goodness, a lot... I've been giving a shit about Haskell for a long for a long as I can remember. Now that kind of reads funny. I've been giving shit about Haskell for as long as I can remember. I follow all their announcements and developments closely, just in case I ever get the urge to use the language for something someday. And that is how Pick got hired. This is the story. It's beautiful, elegant language, Byers observed as he busied himself cleaning a fingernail. You'd be hard-pressed to find a more expressive and composable core. And they've made astounding advances over the years in performance, interoperability, extensibility, tooling, and documentation. I'm kind of surprised I'm the only person on Earth who gives a shit about it, Byers continued. I have thought there would be more people following the press releases closely and then not using Haskell. But they all just skip the press release and go straight to the not using part. Oh, poor Haskell. Oh, gosh, somebody call 911. Oh, no. People see the word like monads in category theory, Byers continued, uh, swatting invisible flies around his head for emphasis, and giving a shit gene shuts down faster than, than a tea bagger with a grade school arithmetic book. I'm really disappointed that more programmers don't actively involve in reading endless threads about the sub, uh, subvert Haskell type system to accomplish basic shit you can do in other languages. But I guess that's the lazy, ignorant, careless world we live in. The so-called real world. <laughs> Haskell researcher ha uh, Javier, Javier, Javier Escula, uh, Escuia. I don't know how to say that name, uh, rem remains hopeful that one day they may be able to double or even triple the number of industry programmers who give a shit about Haskell. I believe the root cause of the popularity problem is Haskell's lack of readability, readable support for mutually recursive generic container types. Pick, is this real? Pick, if you're, if you're here, pick, what the hell does that mean? Can you just hit me with like a, can you just hit me with a, yeah, that's definitely it. Okay, so it's it. Okay, so he knows. Pick knows. I, I knew it. He knew it? Uh, that's a dude for Red Dead? No, I don't think so. Okay, so this is real. Okay, so it is It is this problem. Um, if we can create a monadic composition functor wrapper that is, uh, that is perceived as sufficiently sexy by hardened industry veterans, then I think we will see an uptick in giving a shit, possibly as much as a full extra person. Oh my goodness. I can't believe I just read that sentence out loud. I cannot I, I, I can't even believe this is real. Haskell aficionado Harold McDougal uh, McDougal is not quite as sanguine as his colleague Esquila Esquia. Uh, I doubt Haskell will ever be appreciated by the uneducated natives of this industry. As exciting as it is, the discovery of buyers should be considered an anomaly and not a sign that more people will ever give a shit. Programmers only seem to pay attention to things when there is humor involved. We do not have experiment, uh, uh, experimental humor monad, added McDougal, but it doesn't seem to be getting much adoption. Or wait, oh, we do have an experimental humor monad, but it doesn't seem to be getting much adoption. Haskell fans just don't see the need for it. You know, I'm not going to lie to you. This article hits home in such a funny way. <laughs> I just arrived. I'm not even sure if this is sarcasm. In the sense that there's part of me that's like, I should learn Haskell. Then I need to do something, which is every day of my life. And so then, you know, it's just not going to happen. You know, it's just as much as I want it to. We definitely need more monadic composition functor wrapper solutions to gain more adoption. I would agree. Uh, don't forget to wrap your composition functor. Uh, everybody knows when you don't do that. I mean, the thing is that you're going to get a side effect that you're not expecting. And that, I mean, you could be responsible for that side effect for a long time long time uh the name 
is the Haskellagen. I can't believe I just said that on a YouTube video. That's going to be on a YouTube video. My wife might see that. She might get linked that. And then she's going to be like, what the hell did you just say? What the hell did you just say?